Hey guys, Gilad Rossinger here. Hope you're having a wonderful day. God bless you as you log on today. Praise the Lord. God is doing an amazing thing. And I am so excited to be with you today. Uh, as I shared earlier on the page, some of you might have seen it. Maybe some of you haven't yet. But this video is titled, Come Up Higher and Get Oil. It's res in response to a vision that the Lord gave me yesterday during a time of prayer. And uh, I am so encouraged from this vision. I believe that you are going to be so blessed and encouraged uh, to hear what the Lord showed me. And uh, I believe that this is so relevant to this hour. It's completely consistent with the word of the Lord that I've been sharing about Matthew 24 and 25. It is absolutely essential for us right now to walk in total and complete victory. And so I am just so encouraged in the Lord this morning. And I want to share with you uh, a few things. First, I'm going to share the vision. And then, of course, I'm going to talk about the revelation uh, that God is calling us and his people to walk in in this hour uh, to be a light to the people around us. Um, but also that we might be sons and daughters of the king and truly represent him in this age to come. As it says very, very clearly in the book of Daniel chapter 12, it says, many will be purified, refined and made white. The wicked will not understand, but those who are wise will understand. And then another verse says, those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the stars in heaven and will lead many unto righteousness. And I believe that this word to come up higher and get oil is going to help you do exactly that. So go ahead and share this. I'm going to be sharing a vision that I had yesterday uh, that really blessed me in a time of prayer. And of course, we are calling a corporate fast that's going to start on January 8th. We're going to go for 10 days, and I'll get into the details of that later in this video. But let's go ahead and pray, and then we're going to get right into this. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, the Messiah, the glorious King, Father, we love you. We bless you. We worship you. We honor you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. Father, we worship you. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. We invite you, precious Holy Spirit. Come. Come. Come, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Lord. Come and just saturate. Saturate this broadcast with your presence. Lord, you are the king of glory. Without you, we can do nothing. Apart from you, we can do no good thing. And so, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. Lord, we worship you. We worship you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray that you would lead every person that you are calling higher, every person that you're calling to get oil, every person that you're drawing near to you by your spirit, by your goodness, by your mercy, every person that you're extending the invitation to come into the secret place, to fast and pray, to prepare. I pray you draw them to this message, Lord that they would hear the word of the Lord and that whatever is hindering them from receiving the word or hearing the word, that you would move it out of the way in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. Praise God. The Lord is with us this morning, this afternoon, uh, this evening, wherever it is you're watching from live and on the replay. I just want to bless you. For those just joining, my name is Gilad Rossinger. We share prophetic words. We call the remnant, the body of Christ, into corporate fasting and prayer initiatives. We're very big on the written word of God, walking according 
to the word of God, uh, but of course doing it in spirit and in truth, not being legalistic about it, but knowing that the written word of God is the authority of the Lord and that the words of Yeshua himself says, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. And so we do our best uh, by the grace of God uh, to teach, teach biblical sound doctrine. <laughs> teach. Oh, that was funny. <laughs> oh, I love that little humor today. God is so good. And I'm going to share with you today a vision that I had yesterday in a time of prayer. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to get right into this vision. Then I'm going to tell you uh, the, the scriptures and the chapters that the Lord gave me from the vision. And then we're going to share the response to the word of the Lord and the vision and what that means for you and for us. So yesterday in a time of prayer, I was praying in the spirit. And I began to see up into the sky. It was almost like I was praying and I was clearly on earth. And then I, I heard the, the spirit of the Lord say, look up. And I looked up and I saw this very dark, dark, gloomy layer of clouds and thunderstorms. And it just looked mean. It looked like, you know, one of those days that you see like in the deep, dark winter when there's just you know, uh, clouds and, and storms and tornadoes. And it just looked very, very, very gloomy. And, and I looked at it and it was like, it was covering the whole sky. And because of the storm clouds that were up here, they were like in the second heaven, just in the sky. Um, I began to look around at people all around me in this vision. And in the vision, the people became very distraught because the weather that was unfolding in, in the sky. And they began to be very depressed and very discouraged. And, and some began to attack each other and some began to, you know, um, just, respond in, in various ways and, and, um, not hold on to the promises of the Lord or the written word of God, but they began to operate by what their eyes saw in the sky, meaning that it was almost like, you know, because of the weather, because of the storm, because of the gloominess of the forecast and what was happening, it was portraying an opposite storyline from what they had been waiting for, what they had been promised, and what they were hoping to see as they went about their day. And I heard very powerfully the Spirit of the Lord in this moment when I'm looking at the stormy weather, I'm looking at the rain, thunder, all of it, and then I'm looking at the people discouraged, disheartened, very uh, depressed, and and, and shaken by what they were seeing. And all of a sudden, in the middle of this vision, I hear the voice of the Lord. And the voice of the Lord said, thus says the Lord, come up higher and get oil. Again, the words of the Lord reverberated strongly in my spirit. I heard him clearly in this vision. And he said, thus says the Lord, come up higher and get oil. Immediately after I heard the Lord repeat that same phrase for the second time, I was taken through the storm clouds, almost like teleported. And I, I went through it. And as I was pulled up in the vision, a, a hole, like almost like a portal, <coughs> a hole opened up in the, in the dark sky. And I went up and all of a sudden I was above the storm clouds, above the dark, deep depression that the spirit was portraying in the second heavens. 
and the gloominess and the blackness and all of those things that it represented, the depression, the oppression, the hopelessness, the fear, the things that the enemy had been trying to portray as reality upon the earth. And when I went through it, all of a sudden, I was in the midst of a supernatural, glorious realm of Holy Spirit power. There were rainbow colors everywhere. There was gold. There was sapphire. There was holiness. There was love. There was hope. There was power. There was victory. There was a supernatural Holy Spirit, uh, the total opposite of what I had been looking at in the second heaven, I was all of a sudden taken up and caught up into a higher dimension, a realm of God's glory, where the angelic forces of the kingdom of God were waging war against the devil and his minions, and they were victorious. I'm going to say that again. I was taken up above the realm of the second heaven where the dark, gloomy, depressive, wicked, evil portrayal of oppression, depression, fear, hopelessness, all the demonic spirits, the principalities and powers of darkness that are seated in high places. I was taken above that and what I was shown was a totally different storyline. And the storyline is this. God and his angels are victorious and they're winning the battle. And that is why the demonic things are multiplying and increasing in the earth because many of those wicked, evil principalities have been cast down to the earth. They've been cast down in defeat from the higher positions where the battle is raging between good and evil. And so what was so incredible about this was that in the midst of this vision, the Lord began to impress upon me. He said, you must convey to my people the reality and the truth of what is happening, not the demonic deception that is unfolding upon the earth and what is portrayed to be reality, but what is truly reality. And then the Lord said, I will give you the verses in the written word of God that you will give as a witness to this vision that I have given you. Because whenever we get a supernatural divine experience from the Lord, like a vision, a dream, an encounter, a trance, it's always going to line up with the word of God. It's going to give God glory and it's going to be in agreement with the word of God. And ultimately, it's going to cause you, the reader, the listener, to draw closer to the truth, to draw closer to God, not further away from them. That's why it says test every spirit. So right here, I'm going to show you the chapter that the Lord gave me, the first one, there's more, but the first chapter that God gave me that, that he wants us, the body of Christ, to meditate on and to begin to proclaim, declare, and walk out as the total revelation of what he's doing in this hour, regardless of what your eyes see. All right, turn with me to Revelation chapter four. Revelation chapter four. After this, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven and the first voice which I had heard like the sound of a war trumpet speaking with me said, come up here, come higher and I will show you what must take place after these things. At once, I was in special communion with the spirit and behold, a throne stood in heaven with one seated on the throne. And he who sat there appeared like the crystalline sparkle of jasper stone and the fiery redness of a sardius stone. And encircling the throne, there was a rainbow that looked like the colored color of an emerald. Twenty-four other thrones surrounded the throne and seated on these thrones were 24 elders dressed in white clothing with crowns of gold on their heads. 
From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumbling sounds of peals of thunder. Seven lamps of fire were burning in front of the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And in front of the throne, there was something like a sea or large expanse of glass, like clear as crystal. In the center and around the throne were four living creatures who were full of eyes in front and behind, seeing everything and knowing everything that is around them. My God. The first living creature was like a lion. The second creature was like a calf or an ox. The third creature had the face of a man and the fourth creature was like a flying eagle. Verse 8. And the four living creatures, each one of them having six wings, are full of eyes all over and within, underneath their wings, and day and night they never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Again, they never stop saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanksgiving to him who sits on the throne, to him who lives forever and ever, The 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and they worship him who lives forever and ever and they throw down their crowns before the throne saying, Worthy are you, O our Lord and God, to receive the glory and the honor and the power for you created all things and because of all of your will, they exist and they were created and brought into being. My God, that is Revelation chapter four. Now I'm going to bring to your attention some very interesting parallels or things that are encoded within this chapter that I think are just very cool. You know, again, we stick to the meat of scripture and the written word, but I want to point something to your attention because When I previously released the word that the Lord gave me that 2024 and 2025 will be likened to Matthew 24 and 25, meaning they will contain the same messages, the same parables, a lot of the same dramas and perplexities and messages, teachings that we need to be aware of that God is highlighting because of what's coming upon the earth. In the same reason, I believe the Lord is highlighting Revelation chapter 4 for 2024 because all throughout this chapter, the number 24 is highlighted once again. Let me draw your attention right here. It says here, it says here that in verse 4, Revelation 4 and verse 4, 24, 24 other thrones surrounded the thrones and seated on these thrones were 24 elders dressed in white clothing. Very amazing. The number 24 is connected to the throne of God with the 24 elders that are sitting around the throne of God, giving him glory and honor and praising his name. Another amazing encoded number 24 is found in the four living creatures because this is what it says in verse number eight. And the four living creatures, each one of them having six wings. Again, if you multiply the number four, there are four creatures and they each have six wings. Four times six is 24. Again, you have the number 24 being connected to the throne of God, to the holiness of God, to the worship of God, and to those that surround the throne, giving God glory and praise and honor. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So going back to this vision, the Lord is releasing a word to the body of Christ. And what he is saying is this, 
Do not, do not react or respond based upon what you see happening on the earth below or even in the realm of the second heaven where demonic entities and powers and rulers of darkness are seated in high places. You must come higher. You must come higher. And that's where the rhema word of God that came to me during prayer yesterday, it was a thus says the Lord. And that's how I heard it. I didn't just hear come up higher and get oil. I heard the phrase, thus says the Lord, come up higher and get oil. Come up higher and get oil. This is because when you go up higher, you will go past the warfare, past the lies, past the deception, past the demonic agenda. You will go higher to see the highest truth, to be close to the realm of the glory of God by giving God glory, praise, and honor and worshiping him. And ultimately, the way that we get there is through giving God glory and through worship. We must be grateful and give him great praise and thanks. King David says, enter into the courts of God with thanksgiving and praise. And then here's another really amazing correlation to the number 24, which the Lord gave me to relay and to read. And it says this, it is Psalm number 24. It's the King of glory entering Zion. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness of it, the world and those who dwell in it, for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the streams and the rivers. Now in verse three, this is where we're talking about going higher. Who may ascend unto the mountain of the Lord? Who may go up? Ascend means to go up, to come higher, to ascend. Who may go up? Who may come higher onto the mountain of the Lord and who may stand in his holy place. He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to what is false, nor has sworn oaths deceitfully. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation the description of those who diligently seek him and require God, the Lord, Adonai, as their greatest need, as their greatest need, who seek your face even as Jacob did. In verse seven, it says, lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is he then, this king of glory? Adonai Tzavaot, the Lord of hosts, the God of heaven's armies, he is the king of glory who rules over all creation with his heavenly armies. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just give God praise. Just give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 This is a divine blueprint and strategy for the body of Christ entering into 2024 with Psalm 24, worshiping the Lord in purity and holiness, repenting of sin, washing ourselves in the blood of the Lamb, breaking agreement with everything that is false, with all idolatry, with all idols, with all false belief systems, with all spirits of accusation, with all things that might have held us back from entering in to the gates of the Most High God, ascending the mountain of the Lord to worship Him in spirit and truth, to rise higher above the noise, above the demonic lies, above the fiery darts of the enemy, walking in supernaturally supernatural faith, armored up in the full armor of God, having on the breastplate of righteousness, 
the shoes of the gospel of peace, the sword of the spirit of the word of God, the helmet of salvation, the full armor of God, the belt of truth, rising higher, higher, higher. So the Lord says, thus says the Lord, come up higher and get oil. But here's the, here is the caution and the warning. There are many people that are trying to go higher, but they cannot ascend the mountain of the Lord because they are still holding on to things which are defiled. Slander, gossip. They're falsely accusing their brothers and sisters. They are operating in devious ways. Idols in their hearts. Pornography, hatred, lust, envy, jealousy. The works of the flesh. Those things cannot ascend into the mountain of the Lord. It's not that the people can't ascend. It is that those sins, those things, those evil fleshly things cannot go. They can't go higher. And that's why many are experiencing frustration, depression, anger. That's why many are blocked from going up into the higher realms because they're busy looking at the lies of the enemy. They have believed the deception of the enemy. They have believed the lies. They've come into agreement with what the devil says about them and about other people. And they've, instead of partnering with God, instead of partnering with the word of the Lord, instead of forgiving, instead of loving, instead of releasing, they operate in the spirit of the accuser of the brethren. They partner with the demonic army from the second heaven instead of going up higher and it becomes this never-ending cycle that they're stuck in because they refuse to let go of those things that are hindering them and blocking them from coming higher. And so thus says the Lord, come up higher and get oil. That means forgive that person. That means repent. Repent for your slander and your gossip, your false accusation and your lies. Repent for your evil ways. Repent of pornography. Repent of hatred. Repent of murder. Repent of conspiracy. Repent. Repent of idolatry. Repent of greed. Repent of a lust for power. Repent of those things that you're holding on to that are blocking you from experiencing the glorious worship of the Lord God Almighty. I want to make something very clear. When I release a word of the Lord like this, I always do my best to be broken before the Lord and to check my own heart and to repent myself of anything that I might have missed. I'm not bringing this word in a, you need to do this. I am bringing a word of a, we need to do this. We need to check our motivations. We need to check our heart posture. We need to truly allow the Holy Spirit to examine our hearts. To examine us. Because the spirit of truth is coming. The spirit of exposure is coming. 
And the Lord in his great mercy and grace, he allows us time to repent. He knows that we come from dust. He's gentle. He's merciful. He's loving. And so he wants to give us time through his great grace and mercy, his Holy Spirit. It says in the word of God that we have a high priest that understands the temptations that we face. He understands the pain, the drama, the betrayals, the hurt. Yeshua understands. He was fully God, fully man, walked on this earth, endured great accusation, oppression, rejection, betrayal, slander, envy. Even unto death, he was crucified, an innocent man given over by sinners. We have a high priest that understands. He understands. He understands the pain that you feel because that person lied about you. He understands the pain, the deep trauma of that betrayal when you went out and you were loving and kind and, and open and you had good thoughts towards that person, but they were there to steal from you, to harm you, to, to, to block you, to, to just be jealous and envious. You know, God understands. He understands the pain. One of his own disciples, Judas, one whom he discipled, one whom he brought in close and allowed to be a part of the greatest ministry in the history of the earth, sold him out for 30 pieces of silver. Satan entered him. Yeshua was falsely accused by the Pharisees. He was accused of having a demon when he came to bring the truth of the word of God, to set the captives free, to bring the power of the revelation and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven has draweth nigh. He cast out devils and demons that were oppressing people. And yet he was accused of doing it through the power of Satan. That's why the word of God says that he understands as a high priest, he understands what you're going through, whatever it is. He was tempted in all things, yet he sinned not. When he was led into the wilderness by Satan to be tempted, he was offered all the treasures of the earth. Satan said to him, hey, if you just bow down and worship me, I will give you all of these things. And yet the Lord answered him and said, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. It is written, man does not live by bread alone. It is written. He continued to confront him with the truth of the word of God because he knew who he was. He knows who he is, but yet he also understands, listen, if Yeshua had to fast for 40 days, think about this. He fasted for 40 days in the wilderness. He didn't just come and say, hey, I'm the son of God. I have all power. I'm going to just kick Satan off and defeat him. You know, I'm just going to. He, he didn't operate that way. He knew that being in human form, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He was in flesh. That's why it says pray continuously, fast and pray, because the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He understands our weaknesses. That's why he is saying, thus says the Lord, repent from your sin, repent of your idolatry, repent of slander and gossip, repent of those things that you're involved in, leave them down here Come up higher and get oil. Because where do you get oil? You get oil when you are worshiping the Lord. Come on. When you're in fellowship with the Lord, when you are worshiping the Lord, when you're saying holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Hallelujah.
you get oil. You get oil. When you say, like the 24 elders, they take their crowns of gold and they put it at the feet of the ancient of days who sits on a throne where lightning and peals of thunder, crystal glass, sapphire, lapis lazuli, radiant powers of the rainbow are flowing with majestic glory and honor. The one who created all things, and then they're saying, holy, worthy are you, Adonai Tzavot, who created all things, the first and the last, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, worthy are you to receive glory and honor and praise. That's how you get oil. But you can only get to that place of abandoned, truthful, heartfelt worship without holding on to your idols. You cannot take sinful behaviors and idolatry into the throne room of God and worship a holy God with one hand holding on to that idol which defiles in your other hand. And that is why my brother, my sister, many, many will miss out on the greatest move of God because they refuse to let go of the stumbling block and the sin. Not that they didn't have opportunity to, but they just said, no, I'm not going to do it. Now, I want to I wanna put this disclaimer here. There is a very big difference between wrestling with something, battling and wrestling with sin, and having a complacent behavior towards sin, meaning that you just accept a sinful behavior in your life. You just make peace with it. And you just say, I'm just going to hold on to this because I just want this sin. I don't want to let go of it. I'm not talking about salvation. I'm not saying that somebody that has a sin in their life, a stronghold, can't isn't saved. I'm saying that you're, if you don't surrender that, if you don't declare war on that sin, you will miss out on the glorious move and the fullness of what God wants to impart to his people during 2024. Because in the midst of the shaking, in Matthew 24, the first thing that Yeshua gives the disciple as a sign of the end of the age and his coming, he says, watch out that no one deceives you. His first words in response to them is do not be deceived, meaning great deception is going to be on the earth in these days. Great deception. And later on, he proceeds to say that the deception will be so great that even the elect would be deceived if it were possible. If it were possible, the deception will deceive even the elect. And that's why in my vision, where I was looking up and I was looking around and I saw many saints, many men and women of God, people who had ministries, pastors, prophets, apostles, you know, believers, faithful men and women of God in the marketplace, anointed. They were just looking at the storm clouds. They were believing the false report of the second heaven because a demonic infiltration was coming from the principalities and powers of rulers of darkness through their agents, the false prophets, the angels of light, the prophets of Baal, the Jezebelic spirits, the demonic entities that are operating through men and women on the earth that are preaching a false gospel, they're preaching a false narrative, they're getting people distracted and looking in all kinds of different directions, get caught up in this drama, get caught up in that drama, get caught up in what's happening over here and what's happening over there. And the Lord is saying, no, thus says the Lord, come up higher and get oil. Come up higher and get oil. 
come up higher and get oil. Because you're going to need to have the perspective of heaven. Where he says very clearly in Revelation 4, chapter 1, what I read. After this, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I had heard, like the sound of a war trumpet speaking with me, said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after these things. The Lord is issuing a command to you, to me. Come up here and I will show you what will take place. The Lord is saying, you need to learn to hear my voice in this hour. Thus says the Lord, learn to hear my voice, says the Lord. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. My sheep Hear my voice and they follow me. In this hour, you must learn to hear the word of God for yourself. Yes, you will hear it through prophets. You will hear it through apostles. You will hear it through teachers, through pastors, through evangelists. You will hear the word of the Lord. But you must not only rely on us. You must enter into the secret place of the Most High. It's time for you to ascend for yourself. That way, when you hear a word from me or from someone else or from another anointed man or woman of God in this hour, there are many, many prophetic voices God is raising up in this hour. Many anointed pastors, teachers, evangelists that are speaking the uncompromised truth and bringing the word of the Lord. And I thank God for each and every one of them. But when you hear their voice, you should be like not hearing something for the first time. Sometimes you'll hear a new revelation that God releases through one person. But most of the time, you should be like, yes, that's the word of the Lord. I just heard that two weeks ago. I, I was feeling that in my spirit or God just gave me revelation for last week. You know, you should be for the most part, not always, but for the most part, you should be like, man, this is what the spirit is saying. Because most of the time, the spirit is speaking through his people. And, you know, I'll give you an example. This is so amazing. I'll give you an example. Um, this, this is so just absolutely incredible. I was like, wow, praise God. So I don't remember when it was a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, a month ago, whenever it was. I was in prayer and I shared this. You guys heard it on the video that I did about Matthew 24 and 25. I did a video called Fast Forward. That was the title of the video, Fast Forward. It was like the Lord said, you have to fast forward, meaning moving forward, the people, the men and women of God will need to be fasting and praying more than ever before. And I released that word. And I don't spend a lot of time on social media. I'm rarely on Facebook. I'm usually there just to release, you know, what God is giving us. And sometimes I'll be on there for maybe 10, 15, 20 minutes or so, sometimes more, but usually I'm, you know, I'm just on there a little bit. And last week, I literally, I was like, I saw two different men and women, men of God, two that had released corporate fasting or, or something that was titled Fast Forward. It was absolutely amazing. I think Vlad had it written Fast Forward and then Joshua Giles had a Fast Forward. I just happened to see their post. I didn't really dig deep into it. But it was the exact same phrase that the Lord had spoken to me that I had released in a video a couple weeks ago. I was like, praise God. That's so amazing. It's like they're hearing the same thing because, you know, that that's what happened. Like these, these men of God are super anointed. They have ministries. They're doing big things. You know, I don't think they, you know, heard my message and are, are you know, using that as a title. I think they, they just, they're hearing from the Lord 
the same thing that I'm hearing. And that's what I love. God will bring confirmation through multiple people. And so what is amazing is that when you hear for yourself, then you get another word from a pastor, a preacher, a teacher, an evangelist, a prophet, an apostle, then it will give you so much more confidence to say, man, I heard right. I'm hearing right. Praise God. And then it'll encourage you. It'll build up your faith and it'll just make you feel like, man, praise the Lord. God is speaking to his people. And so again, I just want to wrap this up right now and say that we are calling uh, corporate fast. And there's already many of them going on. Oftentimes there are a lot of fasting uh, going on in January. We usually do it every January as well as the spirit leads. Um, whoever you, you join, it's great. Be led by the spirit. Don't join the fast just to do it. Um, but if you bear witness with the word of the Lord, with what he's given me and others um, during this time, I want to encourage you to pray about fasting forward and pray about joining this fast. Now, we're going to be fasting um, from January 8th, that's this coming Monday, through January 18th. We do all kinds of different fasts. Sometimes it's 40 days. Sometimes it's 21-day Daniel fast. Sometimes it's three or four days. Sometimes it's 10 days. When I was praying about what we should do specifically and about the dates, I felt that we specifically as the Radiant Israel family, Radiant Fellowship International, and those uh, who, who follow us or, or join together with us, we're going to put a, an emphasis, I believe the Holy Spirit is calling us into January 8th through the 18th. Uh, it's 10 full nights, 10 days of corporate fasting and prayer. And um, we're going to give freedom because we know that every person has a different set of circumstances. Some people work full time, part time, night shifts, day shifts. And so every person can offer something to the Lord. Um, and so this isn't a religious spirited kind of thing. This is like we're going to starve the flesh and build up the spirit. We're going to repent of sin. We're going to get rid of any idols anything that's been in our heart, anything that, any habits that have been preventing us from going higher and getting oil. That's the purpose of this fast. It's to starve the flesh and to go higher in worship so that we can get oil from the Lord. And so um, personally, um, I want to give you a few examples of what you can do. You can do a 10 day liquid fast. That's just water, juices. You can do black coffee, coffee maybe. You could do no dairy, um, no sweets, no sugars. Um, you could do a Daniel fast. That's just fruits and vegetables and like, you know, rice and lentils and, you know, oatmeal and things like that. You could do intermittent fasting. That means maybe you just eat one meal a day. Maybe you only have breakfast or you only have dinner. Um, some people have, you know, diabetes and things like that. I'm believing you're going to get healed. Amen. Praise God. But some people have that. So you have to be considerate of that. Some people just need to do a straight up social media fast. Maybe, you know, you, you don't want to miss out on the fasting and prayer that we're doing because we're going to be doing worship and prayer throughout this time. So maybe you want to join us or maybe it's somebody else that you want to join. Praise God. Join whoever. It just the important thing is that you're fasting and praying. Um, so maybe you're like, okay, I'm not going to scroll on Facebook. I'm not going to be on social media. I'm only going to be on there only to watch this message or to listen to this worship that I'm going to be off or whatever. Um, I, you have a couple days from now, you have today, tomorrow, and the next day, you have three days to basically seek the Lord and make preparations and ask him what you want to do for some of you you might be called into an extended period of fasting. And maybe the Lord is saying, hey, I want you to do from January 8th all the way to the end of January. You know, I don't know. Maybe some of you say, I just feel like doing four days or five. Okay, whatever you feel led by the Spirit to do is what you should do. But you should do it with a pure heart and with a, the, the purpose of this fast 
in this, I'm making this declaration. This is for me. This is for my house. This is for my family and for our ministry. What we're doing for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. This is in response to the vision that I had and what the Lord told me he wants the people to do. That is to come up higher and to get oil. That means this is a Psalm 24 and Revelation 4 corporate fasting and prayer initiative. That means I'm going to repent of anything. I'm going to seek the Lord. I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that I'm not walking by the flesh and I'm walking in the spirit. Listen, we all fall short of the glory of God. There are moments when, you know, somebody does something, says something, whatever. And in my flesh, I'm like, Oh, that I don't like that. I want to respond to that. And you know what? I fall short. Others do as well. We all do. And so I'm going to say, you know, all right, I'm going to respond in the spirit. I don't want to respond that way. I'm going to fast and pray and I'm going to crush that. I'm going to crush that. And I'm going to go back into this posture before the Lord of, of worshiping him and just blessing and releasing anything or anyone uh, that is causing harm. Anybody that is doing whatever it is that they're doing that's that's bringing um, uh, any kind of affliction, persecution. I'll give you an example. I don't talk about this a lot, but, you know, there is a steep price to pay standing on the front lines like we do. And oftentimes we get messages and, you know, we don't I don't pay attention to most of them. I don't read them and uh, most of them. But, it, you know, I got a message the other day, uh, two days ago. And I just, I couldn't believe it. And we get a lot of these. Random people have no idea who they are, just angry, cursing up a storm for no reason. The only reason is because we love God. That's it. That's it. Why We literally had a a message come in recently and it was like, F you, F you, you, blah, da, 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 da. And and, and I'm like, (laughs) like, what? I'm like, what? Okay. And, and this person went on to just say, I hate you. I hate your God. I hate your people. You're nothing but hypocrites. You're, I mean, just fueled with anger and hate. And the Lord, I normally don't respond. I just, you know, block. I don't respond. I just don't deal with it. But I felt like the Lord said, no, I want you to respond and just, just bless him. And so I did. I actually responded. I said, hey, I'm sorry. You know, you must have grown up with so much anger in your life. You know, something must have really bad must have happened to you to harbor that much hatred towards someone you don't know just because they believe something different than you. And I just said, you know, I want you to know I forgive you and I bless you. And, you know, I thought that it would soften this person. You know, I was like, maybe if I show him love, you know, it'll soften him because the word of God says um, a gentle answer turns away wrath. But nope, it didn't work. He just came back you know, more vehement, more angry, more this, more that, basically saying, you know, we're going to get you and all this. And so at that point, the Lord was like, okay, you can just block him now. You know, you you, you tried, you gave him the love. Because we're not going to, you know, just stand here and allow people to disrespect and dishonor what's holy and what's righteous. Um, because ultimately, they're not angry at me. They're angry at God. They're angry at holiness. They're angry at truth. They, you know, the, and that's what it says. Yeshua, when he came, he offended so many people because he shined light on their wicked deeds. He brought the spirit of truth and wherever he went, he exposed the sinful, wicked, evil, demonic behaviors of that generation. And they hated him for it because he shined light on their wicked ways and they didn't want to part with their wicked ways. And so instead of repenting and saying, wow, you're right, we are filthy, we're evil, this is wrong. They got more angry because they don't want to be exposed. And so that's what happens is that when you're shining light, you will cause a lot of people to be angry. 
uh, people that don't want to repent, people that have just made up their minds that they're not going to repent. They're not going to act in repentance or obedience to the word of God. And unfortunately, that's the price that we pay. And so I just want to encourage you as we enter into this time of fasting and prayer, I want you to even before you enter in to these, ho- these days are holy. I really believe it. I believe it's holy unto the Lord. What we're going to do is we're going to offer him a sacrifice of praise. We're going to really die to self and we're going to eat the word of God. We're going to pray on the word of God. We're going to proclaim the word of God. We're going to worship God in spirit and in truth. We're just going to trust him to move. We're going to trust him to do a new thing. We're going to just trust him and we're going to respond to his word, which is to come up higher and get oil. And I believe, I believe that the reward for this time of fasting and prayer is going to be intimacy with a holy God. Because ultimately... Our prize, our reward is him. Listen, we all want things to happen in our life. We all want breakthrough, favor, answered prayers, promises fulfilled, prophecies fulfilled. But ultimately, the greatest reminder that we need is that Yeshua is our greatest reward. And if we have him, we already have everything. That's something that he's been impressing upon my heart. And I'm just so grateful uh, that he lovingly shares with us in mercy and in grace. And I want to extend that to you, that we would truly be about the bridegroom king during this time of fasting and prayer. So I want to ask you to pray about joining us uh, January 8th through 18th. If you're in already, just say amen. If this message blessed you, then share it. Uh, with your friends, with your family, because I believe that as we collectively join together, there's no distance in the spirit. Something's going to happen. Something holy is going to happen. The Lord is going to encounter you. He's going to encounter me. He's going to encounter us with his spirit. And we're going to walk away enriched by a greater fellowship with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, I bless every person watching this live and on the replay. Lord, we choose to bless our enemies. We choose to bless those who persecute us. We choose to die to our flesh and say, Lord, forgive them. Forgive them for they know not what they do. Lord, forgive them. Bless them. Those who constantly threaten harm, threaten oppression, those who who try to harm the innocent. Lord, we say, Father God, Adonai Tzavaot. Lord, save their souls before it's too late. Save them, Lord. Intervene. Bring holy and righteous justice and judgment. God, show up in fire and in power. Whatever must be done. Lord, in some cases, I'm hearing the word in my spirit, deliver their flesh unto Satan so that their souls can be saved. Father, ultimately, we never want to pray that type of prayer, but only in the case when they have refused and will not change course. And if they don't have any help from you, they're going to spend eternity in hell which is the worst punishment that could ever happen to anyone. And so, Lord, I pray right now, my heart goes out for the souls of those who are facing eternal separation from you. I just pray, Lord, let your holy, righteous judgment and justice fall upon them. And I'm reminded right now by the Holy Spirit, the greatest thing that ever happened to me was a near death experience. When I was, when you came and you reached out to me and I was, I was running away from you, Lord. I was deep in sin and engulfed in sin in the word, in the world before you came and got me. I was a prodigal son, Lord. And I remember that, Lord, my world collapsed. I lost everything. 
I watched my, my earthly possessions burn up in front of me, Lord. And, but it was that moment that seemed like it was terrible. It was the wor- the worst thing that ever happened to me. It ended up being the greatest gift you ever gave me in my whole life because it brought me into your arms, into your kingdom. And Lord, there are some believers, there are some pastors, ministers who are so deep in deception that they're facing this kind of moment. I just pray, God, whoever it is, whether it's somebody out in the world, whether it's somebody who's uh, masquerading in your church, or if it's someone else, Lord, that you would just bring your grace and your mercy that you would save them from eternal judgment in Yeshua's name. And Lord, as we pray for those, as we pray for those, Lord, who persecute us, Father, I pray when we enter into this time of fasting and prayer, God, that we would draw closer to you and that you would pour out your golden oil upon us, that oil of intimacy, that we would be filled with oil, just like it says in Matthew 25, that we would receive and and be filled and bring with us extra oil, that we would be likened to the wise virgins. And that's my prayer, Lord, for this fast, for this time of fasting and prayer, that it would set the pace for 2024, that it would set the posture of our hearts and our minds to be a people of worship, a people of prayer, a people of repentance, a people of forgiveness, a people after your own heart, like King David, who said in Psalm 24, who may ascend the mountain of the Lord and who may enter into your holy dwelling? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul in vain to an idol. I thank you, God, in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. Wow. Praise the Lord. I feel the Holy Spirit. God is good. He is worthy to be praised. Just give him praise. Just give him hallelujah. Just give him praise. I'm encouraged. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to this time. Um, we, we, we're already getting a head start. Um, and God is good. We're just pressing in and, uh, just want to encourage you, um, that no matter what it is, there is nothing, nothing that is greater than his presence. I, I'm, I'm just hearing in my spirit. I'm going to close with this. Not all of you, some of you, a small fraction of people listening to this are actually having a thought having a thought in their mind, but I just, I like smoking too much, or I just like that sin too much. I don't know if I can do it. I like this thing too much. I'm just, I'm telling you, better is one day in his house than a thousand elsewhere. I don't, I don't care what that pleasure is, what that deception is, what that sin is. I promise you, if you lay it down, if you release it, there's time. This is a cry from a merciful, loving, gracious God and saying, come just as you are. The first will be last and the last will be first. He's saying, listen, some of you think you're not worthy. Some of you think you can't come into the secret place. You can't ascend the hill of the Lord. The Lord says, that's a lie. Yes, you can. Anyone, anyone with clean hands and a pure heart can enter in. It just means that you have to truly repent truly break agreement with those things. It doesn't mean you're not going to struggle. It doesn't mean you're not going to have moments of weakness. It just means that you have to be serious about holiness. And whenever that sinful desire or temptation comes up, you just have to resist it and declare war on it and just say, Lord, I don't want this. Take it from me and exercise your authority and declare the word of God and say, greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. I'm not going to participate in that. Amen. That was just a last little nugget for some of you on here. I believe that most people watching are just going to be on fire and you're just going to be running to the altar. As a matter of fact, I, I'm seeing a vision right now of people dropping idols, dropping sins, dropping things, and just running to the altar, grabbing hold of a golden ark of just the, the glorious throne of God, because you know that he is going to impart something so special to you. I believe that's the majority of people watching. But for those of you who are hesitating, don't miss this. Listen, don't miss this. 
Don't miss this opportunity. I believe God wants to release something amazing to you. I believe destinies will be unlocked. I believe prophetic destinies, revelations, new mantles are going to be unlocked, given, released. Amen. Do not miss this. I just hear this so loudly in my spirit. There's somebody watching me. I don't know who you are. I'm, I haven't been given a name, but I just, I, I'm feeling an urgency to not let you leave until you agree with this. God, there's some, oh, I feel this. My God, you shall not miss your destiny, says the Lord. You shall not miss your destiny, says the Lord. You shall not miss your destiny, says the Lord. I declare and decree by the authority of the Most High God, let them go, Satan, let them go, let them go that they might serve and worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I break that demonic stronghold over you right now. I break that demonic stronghold over you right now. I break that demonic stronghold over you right now, my God. There is someone, there is a battle for your destiny. Hear me, I feel the anointing of God. Someone watching me right now. There is a battle for your very destiny and Satan is throwing everything at you because he knows that you are right now about to receive the glorious impartation and the fulfilled promises over your life and he's throwing everything at you and the Lord says, resist and run to the altar. Do not not turn around. Do not give in to that sin. Do not go back there for your breakthrough is imminent. It is at hand, says the Lord. Who show rabakate? Come on. Come on, somebody. You're about to receive your breakthrough. My God, you are about to receive it. Do not turn around. Do not give in. Come up higher, says the Lord and get oil. Amen. My God, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There is a war. There is a war being waged for souls, for destinies, for prophetic fulfillment. And you are at the threshold right now. And I'm saying, go for it, whatever it takes. Fast and pray. Enter into this time of fasting and prayer because you will see the manifestation. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Some of you are about to receive that phone call you've been waiting for. Some of you have been obedient in the secret place for a very long time. Some of you are getting ready to see the manifestation of that promise. Praise God. Amen. God bless you guys, and we'll see you next time. Take care.